Amen. Amen. Welcome, everyone, to Good Line United Methodist Church. Whether you're right there in front of me in living color or joining us on Facebook now or later in the week, welcome to Good Line for this time of worship. No matter who you are, where you come from, or where you're going, no matter what you believe or doubt, no matter who you love, God loves you, Amen. and you are welcome to this place. Amen. 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 All right, I call your attention to several things in the bulletin on the back cover, our normal list of announcements, plus something very special and important is there's an insert, a blue insert in your bulletin, uh, related to ways that we as a faith community can help the hurricane relief efforts um, on really the eastern half of our country. Um, I'll let you read through the, the various bulleted points, but I do want to call your attention to the fact that on November the 3rd, we will gather uh, together for those that are able to, to put together flood buckets. And that will be occurring on November 3rd in the gymnasium. So, so as many of, of us can, can come and make that. And then it's time for Trunk or Treat, where we get together with our friends in the neighborhood and um, really just uh, for a kind of fellowship and, and a good time on October 27th at the Municipal Lot on 55th Place in First Avenue South. That will occur between 3 p.m. and 5 p.m. We're still collecting candy and we'll need some folks to sign up to decorate the trunk. Um, or the bed of your truck. Um, you can see the flyer out the foyer um, and sign up on the bulletin board there. And it is October still, so we're collecting new socks, adult sizes mainly, from the Mary Catholic Worker House. You can place your donations in the basket and it's out on the foyer as well. And then please grab a pack of cards to fill out for those incarcerated at Donaldson Correctional Facility uh, on the table in the court. Uh, we will return those, uh, please return your cards by November 3rd, um, once you get those to go back. Our Psalter lesson comes from Psalms 90, 16. Please follow along in your book. Let your work be manifest to your servants, and your glorious power to their children. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and prosper the work of our hands. O oh, prosper the work of our hands. Amen. Let us be in a time of prayer. Creator God, you are the spirit and breath of the universe. You are the center towards whom we journey and the way leading to holiness. We see your world of abundance and blessing all around us. We hear your call to be your eyes, your ears, your hands, to experience this creation and care for it. Expressing our wonder and thankfulness and praise, we come together as a community of faith and compassion we open our hearts and minds to you. Come and inspire us, dwell with us, and make us one in the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now I invite you to stand as you're able for our opening hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God, in the Holy Intent.
you to remain standing as you're able, or leading the World Methodist Social Affirmation. It's found on page 86 of your hymnal. And I will call your attention to the fact that this goes across two pages, so you don't have to turn the page and as you do this. We believe in God, creator of the world and of all people, and in Jesus Christ, incarnate among us, who died and rose again, and in the Holy Spirit, present with us to guide, strengthen, and comfort. We believe God, God of our hearts and belief. We rejoice in every sign of God's kingdom, in the upholding of human dignity and community, in every expression of love, justice, and reconciliation, in each act of self-giving on the behalf of others, in the abundance of God's gifts entrusted to us that all may have enough in all responsible use of the earth's resources. Glory be to God on high and on earth peace. We confess our sin, individual and collective, by silence or action, through the violation of human dignity based on race, class, age, sex, nation, or faith, through the exploitation of people because of greed and indifference, through the misuse of power in personal, communal, national, and international life, through the search for security by those military and economic forces that threaten human existence, through the abuse of technology which endangers the earth and all life or it. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We commit ourselves individually <clears throat> and as a community to the way of Christ, to take up the cross, to seek abundant life for all of humanity, to struggle for peace, justice, and freedom, to risk ourselves in faith, hope, and love, praying that God's kingdom may come. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Therefore, 
since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to emphasize with our weakness, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are. Yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. The word of God. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> It is a blessing simply to see each other today, isn't it? To be together in this place for this reason. We give thanks. And we give thanks for all the ways that we are able to serve. Not that we brag or, or boastful, but thankful that we make a difference. Thankful that you make a difference. And our prayers today are lifted on behalf of all of those who are in need and we have our prayer list sent out in the midweek, mid and uh, um, I'll read some of those names. We pray for Gerald Benchley and David uh, Flint, Terry Hall, pray for the Jones family, Tag McCord, Nathan Thompson, Baby Cat Turner, Linda and Randall Wade, Linda Walker. We, we did uh, have a bit of misinformation, unintentional, about Linda. We had heard that Linda had had surgery, but Linda did not have surgery. It was a different Linda Walker. And so uh, we, we pray for the Linda Walker who had surgery, and the Linda Walker that we that is a member of our church, thank you be to God, did not have surgery. And so uh, we, we, we are, we are uh, corrected there. We pray for Diane uh, Lowe Waters, uh, Doc Wilkie, Rachel Dixon, and John Sutton. And of course, we pray for our neighbors and community around us. Pray that our uh, trunk or treat will be a success and that we'll make friends and bear good witness. We pray for our co-op members and for that work. We're praying for all of those who've suffered loss in these recent storms. And um, we are grateful that we can make a difference. And you saw listed there on the insert the ways that we can do that. So please, just choose one of those and be a part of that in whatever way is best for you. We will be assembling some flood flood buckets here. Hope to assemble 20, I think we said 20 buckets. And so uh, read about that and, and be a part of that if you can after the worship service on November 30th. Uh, November 3rd, excuse me, not 30th, 3rd. Um, we pray for um, peace in our world. Mm -hmm. Are there other prayer concerns that you would add to, to the list today? Tim. Tim, we pray for Tim always, yes. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Chris Riker. Chris Riker. Chris Riker. Thank you. R I K E R. Yes. All right. Thank you. Others? All right. In peace, let us pray. Lord, we confess that we do not know how to pray as we call it. But your spirit intercedes with signs too deep for words. And beyond what we say and what we hear verbally, Lord, there is a groaning of our spirits. There is a cry of our hearts. The deep desire for kindness, for compassion, for fairness and justice, for cry for truth, for reason, for hope. We pray for recovery in all of its forms. 
We pray for healing in all of its manifestations. We pray for peace in all of its possibilities. We pray for salvation in all of its fullness. We pray that for those whose names we call aloud and for those needs we've acknowledged. And Lord, we pray that for one another. We thank you that we are a congregation committed to ministry in this community and beyond. Lord, it is a privilege one that we receive gratefully and pray that we may exercise faithfully. So lead us now as we seek to do your will. Help us to be the very people that you made us to be, that you call us to be, that you destined us to be through Christ, our Lord who taught us to pray our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours forever. Amen.
the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verses 17 through 31. As he was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these as my youth. Jesus, looking at, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go sell what you own and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at this. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God, all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, Look, we've left everything and followed you. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, there is no one who's left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children and fields with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last will be yours. The Gospel of Jesus Christ. Praise, Praise to the living word. Thank you. <clears throat> Aren't you glad that Scripture is not populated by people who have everything all figured out? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it is as much as anything else a book of questions, a book of mysteries, a book that tells the stories of people who are struggling to have faith. Struggling faith can go in two directions. Struggling faith can become no faith. Or struggling faith can become radical faith. And the difference between them has to do with choices we make. But more than that, with the grace that is given. Our friend Job is a struggling traveler. And we know the backstory that he doesn't know why he's suffering as he is. And Job is struggling simply to keep showing up. For him, grace is the will and the wherewithal not to give in and not to give up. He refuses to give in to those religious people who keep trying to convince him it's all his fault. He rejects their arguments. It takes some amount of faith to resist the pressure of religious convention, doesn't it? And yet, if we are to know God, there are times when we have to say no to certain religious things. We read that, or sang that hymn this morning by Martin Luther, and Luther had to do that. Amen. And sometimes so do we. Amen. Job stands his ground. He refuses to give in. And though he doesn't know where God is, 
He's determined to keep looking. He will not be silent. He demands an answer. He wants some glimmer of truth that squares with the faith that he has, though it is a struggling faith, and the life that he is required to live. And sometimes in life, that's what faith is. It's simply the will and the wherewithal, the desire, the determination to keep showing up, to keep asking questions, even to argue. And to say to God, where are you? And to believe in the worst of circumstances that God surely must know and must care. Amen. So Job's a hero, a struggler whose faith becomes radical faith. Jesus encounters a rich man and things go in a different direction. Mark tells us that Jesus was about to go on a journey. As far as I know, that's the only time that word is used. I'm, I'm struck by that. Where do you think Jesus was going? <laughs> We're not told. The rich man comes and kneels before him as an act of reverence and faith. And he says, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus surprises him. He says, well, why are you calling me good? That must mean that you think something about me, that only God is good. Does that mean you think I'm God? And then Jesus says to the man, you know the commandments. And he lists them. And we can almost imagine that with a sigh of relief, the man says to Jesus, I've, I've done that. I've done that very thing all my life. And yet the rich man must know that keeping religious rules will not be enough. Because he's there asking Jesus. He surely must want more than the simple assurance that he's already doing the right thing. You don't go to that much trouble just to be told you're all right. <clears throat> the rich man is privileged, isn't he? He's exceptional. He has enough of what he wants and enough of what he needs to be secure and to be comfortable in a world where most people don't have enough. And yet he knows that all of that is tenuous. And he wants to know what he can do to put himself in the best position for that life that will come when money isn't enough. He wants to know what he can do to be prepared for the eventuality that he knows awaits him. I'm struck by this at two levels. On the one hand, it seems rather obvious that he knows he's going to die. We all know that, don't we? What will life be like then? Someone said you've never seen a U-Haul trailer being pulled behind the hearse. There was an old fellow down home who was quite wealthy. It was said of him that he didn't want all the land in the county, just the land that joined his. <laughs> and when he died, someone asked, how much do you think he left behind? And someone else said, well, I guess he left it all. 
So the fellow knows, the rich man knows that that will come and money won't suffice. But maybe he also knows that Jesus is talking about a new order. Uh, what the theologians would call an eschatological reality, a, 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 a transformation of the world into something different. God's kingdom coming on earth as in heaven, God's will being done on earth as in heaven, that somehow there will be a realm in which having money won't be the most important thing. Maybe he wants to know how to get ready for that. And Mark says that when Jesus looked at him, he loved him. He loved him. He loved that man as a fellow human being. He loved him as a man. He loved him in his vulnerability. He, he loved him in his bondage. He loved him for the sake of what he could yet be. And he says, Jesus says to the man, you lack one thing. Liquidate your assets and give the money to the poor. Then come follow me and you will have the buried treasure of heaven. Why does Jesus say that? Why do you think? The man can't do it. His faith is struggling. A struggling faith. And yet at this moment, he turns and walks away and has no faith in what Jesus says. He leaves shocked and he leaves grieving. And the fact that he is grieving suggests that he knows the loss. He appreciates that this is not a good decision. He cannot help himself. And that then prompts Jesus to say how hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom. The man walks away, but the disciples are still there. And Mark says that when they hear this, they are perplexed. They're confused. They don't know what to think. They don't know what to say. And Jesus recognizes that and repeats the statement, how hard it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. Well, why is it hard? The disciples are astounded and they say, well, who can be saved? Jesus says, well, with human effort, it's not possible, but with God's help, it is. Those who have wealth, in the case of this man, at least, there are two things. One is that his wealth is his life. He simply cannot allow himself to sink to be identified only as a man, as a human being. He only knows himself as a rich man. And to give up the wealth is to give up the identity, to give up the sense of who he is, his self, his self. 
And the other aspect of this is that he's just not so sure how he will make it if he doesn't have the money. Jesus is prophesying about this kingdom of God and, and suggesting that somehow uh, material things will take care of themselves and God will care for those who trust God and that somehow all of that will work itself out. And he's just not certain about that. And so he turns away. But the disciples, with their struggling faith, keep hanging in there. And they say to Jesus, look, you're talking about giving up, we're giving it up. We've left it behind, we're following you. And then Jesus says something that is absolutely astonishing. He says, I tell you, no one's left anything in terms of family or possessions that they will not receive a hundred times more in this life and in the life to come, a life that's appropriate to that age, eternal life. The disciples do not understand this. They don't see how that can possibly be. It hasn't happened yet. They're living day to day based on the, the kindness of strangers on the contributions of those who give and an occasional trip, maybe fishing, but they're not wealthy. What in the world does Jesus mean? They don't understand. Their faith is struggling, and yet they stay with Jesus, don't they? Well, at least all but one of them follows to the very end. They witness the crucifixion. They witness the wonder of resurrection. Jesus teaches them. He tells them what they are to do. They receive his spirit and they live in his power. And there will come a day in the not too distant future when they will experience the very thing that the rich man refused. They will live in a community where people will voluntarily surrender their possessions and share what they have with everyone else. And in that community, it will be said of that community, there was not a needy person among them. And great grace was upon them all. they will experience that very thing. The sense of family multiplied. The sense of economic security for all. And that experiment, that first experiment of that first faith community will be an experiment in kingdom living. In living with radical faith in God. Yeah. And they will know that. The rich man will still have his wealth. And they will have life. Yeah. Where does that leave us? It seems to me that it leaves us at the place of acknowledging that we struggle. We struggle with those hard decisions. And Christ puts before us the proposition that, that, that we, we can have life abundant, but not on the terms that the, earth, the world typically offers it. Yeah. That we, we don't prosper simply by continuing with business as usual. That it is in generosity, it is in giving, and sharing that we learn what it means to live in God's kingdom. Yeah. And that we are called to surrender whatever it is 
that defines our identity apart from the grace of God. That we are to remember that on that day when we breathe our last and we leave behind all our things, there will be one thing that matters, and that is the love of God. And so it is now. So it is now. It is a privilege to struggle in faith with you. May our faith as we struggle move more and more to radical faith. We come before the Christ, our high priest, who sympathizes with our weakness, who has faced life as we must face it. And therefore, when we pray and when we <coughs> we before God, we kneel before the throne, not of judgment, but of grace. Amen. To receive mercy and grace in our time of need.
Let us hear the invitation to the Lord's table. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Our merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We, we have failed to be the leading of church. We have not done your will. We, we have broken your law. We, we have rebelled against your love. love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we had sinners. That proves God's love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate the sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from captivity to sin and death, and waved with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your Word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink, in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. <laughs> gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast in his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. there is one loaf we or many or one body for we all partake of one loaf this bread we break is a sharing in the body of Christ and this cup over which we give thanks is a sharing 
and the blood of Christ. this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Enable us now to go forth in the strength of your grace and your spirit to give ourselves to others as we would unto you. Remembering how the Lord Jesus said, and as much as we do this unto one of the least, we do it unto him. Amen. Yeah. Our closing hymn is number 2196 in the uh, faith we sing, so let's stand together and sing. Thank you.
15 minutes late. Well, we're not quite 15 minutes late. <laughs> Somehow we made it. So thank you for, for enduring to the end. As we go, let us go in God's grace and peace. Receive this benediction. Now to the one who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before divine glory. Be glory and majesty, power and dominion, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Amen.